Yes, very good, dear Astermania, because we finally have the option for EQ. Moat. For equatorial mount of the SI is such, whether S50 or this S30, it seems to me that it is something fundamental, a great change, or that, as many of us know, the simutal high option that we have so far has some limitations. The main thing is that we have long exposure times, a long time, because we are going to have that field protection that is inevitable. The other thing is that each individual image, we can't do much time either because we are also going to do the field rotation problem with the equatorial option. Well, all this is resolved. I think it's great. I'm going to explain how to do it. It's pretty simple, so we're going to do a pretty simple tutorial on how to use this equatorial mount option for napping. Go on. Well, the first thing is, well, knowing how to locate, how to orient the telescope on the mount. For that, this mount is not ideal. This is simply a camera tripod. It is quite stable, that is relatively stable, but let's say it is not ideal. We always run the risk that it can by tilting the telescope. They can, this time we have to tilt the telescope. We can take the risk, especially if there is wind or something, that we can fall. We don't want that, of course, because it's going to get damaged then the ideal would be to look for another option. What could be another option? I'm going to buy here. They have this, this guy of bases. Let's say this type of West Mount, I don't know. How would you put it? In Spanish, which allows us very easily rotate on both axes to control the polar room. It is on High Point Scientific both. I am going to leave the link in the video description for how to show it. So sorry for how to buy it. And then they would have to mount it on a fairly stable tripod. It could be, for example, this type of tripod that I have here because it is quite stable. You can buy a tripod. So it is more recommended than this one with a mount. Of course, this other one, for example, too. It's quite, it's much more even stable, but it is little harder is heavier. Isn't it harder to manipulate? So recommend something like this gives you more stability. And then they place, I repeat, this type of base that can be controlled. And that would be ideal. Or K, then you can also have another option. Use these normal telescope mounts. In this case, they wouldn't use the mount as a mount, let's say. You don't have to turn it on. It would simply be used as a support for the telescope because these mounts have the ease that they can be rotated in both axes, not controlled and pointed north. I don't have the telescope in this case. I'm not going to use these mounts. I'm going to explain how to use it with a simple type. This guy is pretty stable. It is not ideal. I repeat, there is always some risk. So something more stable is better. Nor does 111 allow us orientation towards the North Pole, super accurate, but I've already tried it and it's quite efficient. If we don't have anything else, then we can use a guy like that. Of course, always be sure that it is a type of, not a type that is too light and too simple because there are others that are very simple and are not going to support the weight of the telescope. Something like this, well, now. It could be used, although this dick is not the best option now how to orient the telescope according to if it is in the application. Well, you should put this light here where the power button is, etc. We are going to turn it on simply so that you can view it. Not this power button facing south. We are going to turn it. I mean, we want to know. Let's say north is facing over there. The telescope would have to be tilted over there. Now I'm going to show you how. And then this button, they recommend that it be towards the opposite side. So I'm going to move it. Always be careful. Always be careful that the screw does not loosen. He's suggesting this has to be well when he rotates to put it on. In position. Of each, always make sure that the screw does not flare or K is in this position. I repeat, this would be the south, let's say, and north that way. Now we tilt the telescope north. 
Let's see here. Let's say the North Star is in this direction. We point the telescope in this direction. How many degrees of inclination? Well, it depends on the latitude in which you are. But I repeat, if you have the polar star visible pointing towards there. Polar star. And then, with the application, we are going to do the final orientation. I'm going to explain how, but hey, it's already oriented, I repeat, in this direction towards the North Star. With the power button, these lights towards the opposite side pointing up towards the south. In this case, it's not really towards the equator, towards the celestial equator, but opposite the North Pole, or if it's south, of course, opposite the South Pole. Well, once we have everything ready, the application of the yes is going to tell us what the angle we have. It is going to tell us here cure latitude. 41, that is the latitude where I am is 41 and the telescope is tilted 46. That is, it means that I have to lower it a little further. This we are going to do now, but I am going to explain to you, of course, how to get here. I'm not going to explain how to install, that is, how to open the application, how to connect if it is. I have a complete tutorial on all this, very extensive, this tutorial simply to explain how. Put the telescope in equatorial mode. As you see here, I repeat, in the Pantada it goes at 46 degrees, and my latitude is 41 and it is pointing. I repeat, north would be this way. Of course, this has to be done at night. I'm going to show you how to do it at night. But it's so that you can see the orientation that the telescope has to have. So once you get out at night, well, I'm going to show you how to make the precise polar call. And I'm going to give you some tips, let's say some advice, etc., for some situations that may arise. Well, as I said, we have to wait until he comes out at night to be able to show you what precise polar divination looks like. But first, I'm going to give you a tip that I think is very important. I'm going to explain something you can do to solve if anyone has the same problem that occurred to me, let's say, when I went to do it. The polar gain. But hey, first of all, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you are interested in the videos we are making here. Stop it. Stay updated with new previews, software updates, astronomical events, such as photographing different celestial objects or simply reveling in the universe's wonders through more than just photographs, videos, etc. So if I am interested, then subscribe to the channel and like this video if you find it useful, yes. And so, of course, contribute to the growth of this channel to further growth. People and then eventually... Now let's go to the tip that I am going to give you, Pepito, which seems important to me. Well, this suggestion that I'm going to give you was because something happened to me and I have the building covering the entire western part of the sky. And when the telescope is going to do the triangulation, let's say, to orient itself where the axis is located and stops to do the polar alignment, it happened to me that he started trying to look at an area in the sky where the building was, the wall of the building covered it then I couldn't see, of course, any stars. And there it kind of frizzes, the alignment stops working. What did I do? I repeat, as I said before, this button is suggested to be up, say toward the equator opposite to yes, pointing up. But I realized it's not necessary. Apparently it is not necessary because I, when the telescope began to try to photograph something that I was here against the building, which of course didn't see any stars, because it occurred to me to simply rotate it so that the telescope towards an area where there is no obstacle for the telescope to see stars. The telescope then took images of the sky and followed its normal calibration. I mean, it seems to indicate that this suggestion that this power button has to be exactly up to a certain place is not necessary. That is, if you have any object covering this area or this area, any area of the sky, the telescope is trying to use to orient itself. And of course, there's going to be nothing because there's an object, a tree. 
a building, anything, because we can manually rotate the telescope towards an area that is free of obstacles and the telescope will start. So the calibration, that is, it doesn't need to be in this direction. If you have the sky completely free, then you will not have problems. But if you have any obstacles, you can turn it, always being careful when you turn it manually. They don't loosen the screw and the scope. So it shall be. This is a ticket. It seems important to me because many of us do not have it. One person. From the open sky on certain occasions or from our patio or whatever. So if that happens to them, maybe they are afraid to rotate the telescope because it says to be even oriented up. Exactly. Not necessarily. Well, now we are going to wait for it to come out at night and we are going to do the polar alignment. Well, once we have it oriented in this position, that is towards the north, as I explained, and with the approximate inclination of the latitude of the place, then how to activate the equatorial mode? Let's go here where it says Astromania is Astromania because it is the name I gave to the team. It is not the team as such. And then we go here to Bank Future, to Future Properties, Advanced Options, Advanced Options, and then here we are going to see where it says mount mode. Here it says altacimental mode. Come here. How how to use equatorial mode on system. Let's go from the SAS up by step. Shop, uh, as I pointed out, there is a tutorial, but uh, well, it is in English. So let's go here when we go gore. I understood it, or I had it, that is, I understood the message, the video. Well, we click here on that button, and we, this screen appears, so here it points as number one. Please tilt the, if you are following the figure, this figure that we have here, here, the power bar on up, and point to the North Shop. The button has to be up the power button, and the explanation is a little confusing because it says, and pointing to the north, what has to be pointing to the north, as you can see in the image, is this position of the yes. It is not the button as such. The button is really pointing to the equator, that is 90 degrees with respect to the inclination of the telescope. Uh, so number two, uh, well adjustment. As I had said, the inclination to the angle of position plus or minus the latitude. As you can see here, mine says 39, and my latitude that is estimated by the Psi being automatically is not 41. That is, it is a little moved. But hey, we can adjust that when we already adjust the polar. No, and then we already have the position here. So let's go here where it says switch above. Here, this red sign in the upper right corner switch means change no or. And then here it says, make sure you change mode properly if you need to be in the home position and then click to change the mode position now. What do you mean? We have to be sure that the telescope is, as you can see here in the home position, that is, it is stored we cannot take out the telescope, or at least this is what it indicates here to open the telescope before doing. We have to leave it like this closed, and then when he starts to look for the north position, well, or the breath not with the north pole, he is only going to open. Let's see here now. Here, if we see on this screen, but it opens this window that says below, or this button that says get polar food from Viation, we are here, here at the bottom, and it is going to start opening. As you can see, it's rotating and it's going to start. Try to search. A close position from what I see close. Deleted in. Zenith not near the highest point of the sky. And there he's going to start taking photos. Of course, to triangulate the images to tell us how much we have to treat the telescope 
horizontally and vertically to give it an adequate polar orientation. There he is trying to take pictures. As you can see, it's almost aiming towards the zenith, and then you take that picture. Well, it rotates a little and takes another image towards another area of the sky. And what it normally knows is not when you are going to calibrate a telescope, etc., that it has to take two, three points. I don't really think it takes three points to do the triangulation and orient yourself right okay so here it puts us as you see the angle it indicates that horizontally it is deviated by 14.3 degrees i need to turn it in the in pardon vertical 0 0.8 meaning it's quite precise when green indicating a good value the value is acceptable isn't it but then if I have to turn it, is it? It's almost 15 degrees, actually more than 14 degrees. In the horizontal, we are going to rotate it a little here. I repeat, this specific mount is definitely not ideal. No, I'm planning to buy a better one later. But hey, it's what I have available at the moment. Here I am turning, I'm turning. As you can see, five, four, at first are steadily decreasing. Just a little bit more. Now I've gone too far, so I'm gonna go back, okay, eight, as you can see, now I get this green mark one. Popcorn, as they often say, signifies. Is that everything for right now? Perfectly aligned, that is. It has a slight deviation of 0 0.3 degrees in horizontal and 0 0.1 in vertical. When does this cycle emerge with this, along with this check mark and this mark that's indicating that it's already there? Correct, yes. We give here, it is a little confusing. If we go here, get for a linear deviation, it will try to calibrate again. I mean, we don't have to. When I get out. This green cycle with the poppy. That's all for now. Correctly aligned, as you see, of course, if you have one more mount, they can attempt to align it a bit more accurately. Even more and more. Close this 0 0.4 and 0 0.1. I'm going to leave it here because currently with this horse gut, I can't do much more, right? So once it's like this, well, it's ready, it's ready. We leave this part of here and we're going to to the main menu and we're going to take an image to check. We're going to be gazing and we're going to, I'm going to skip this. Here I am going to go directly to the map to manually choose an object or okay, K these objects that are perfect for this option. Here as you see. The triplet, Leo, is in an excellent position for this. I don't even need to frame it to fit everyone, and I'll begin taking email.